Now, the elephant in the room. How many frames should we be hitting for? What should our settings be? Well, how long's a piece of string? It all depends on what your system is for a start. First of all, my system is an i9 9900K, 32 gig of RAM, and a GTX 1080 Ti. So, you know, maybe above average, but certainly not a powerhouse. Um, the secret with DCS World and with X-Plane and with Microsoft Flight Simulator is uh, management of expectations, number one. And number two, being a little bit savvy with regards to the uh, mixture of settings that you need to have. Now the first thing to do, and I'm going to put some screenshots up of uh, the, I'm using a Quest 2, of the Quest 2 settings in the Oculus Home, Oculus Link app. Um, for this first part of this video, we're going to trial um, with 80 hertz refresh rate and a full 1.6 on the resolution, remembering that's not super sampling, that's full 1.6. In the sim, well, you know, you've had it on the screen for a while now, you can see, you know, we've got textures high, high, off, medium, blah, 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 blah. Two times MSAA, I mean, uh, you can get away with zero, but you know, two is fine. Um, and over here, you can see my settings for the clutter and glass, clutter and grass, trees and, and gamma and so on. Nothing special. And on the VR side of things, there is no requirement at all to increase the pixel density. If you're a little bit savvy with your settings in the Oculus Debug tool, there's no requirement whatsoever to increase the pixel density. density. So the first thing, and again, I'll put screen grabs up, is on your um, Oculus, for this first video, the trial that we're gonna do is we're gonna be 80 hertz, We've got 45 frames per second with a synchronous spacewalk disabled. Um, and that's by the Oculus Debug tool. Again, I'll put screen grabs up. Okay, let's uh, jump into the cockpit. Okay, in the cockpit now. Now, the recording you're seeing is through the right eye, but you notice on the Oculus Debug tool that we've set the um, distortion to low and we haven't messed around with the pixel density whatsoever and the cockpit is crystal clear hopefully you can see that because we've got asynchronous spacewalk turned off um, we've got no interpolation um, we're able to move our head and everything is nice and smooth um, and because a synchronous spacewalk is turned off and we've fixed at 40 which is a multiplier, obviously, of 80 hertz, which is our refresh rate, we have got a fairly good experience in the cockpit. And that's how it will stay. All the time, we're able to maintain 40 frames per second. The minute we dip below 40 frames per second, i.e. because of the amount of uh, uh, draw that's, that's required, that is when we'll start to receive judders. But, you know, in the cockpit, if you're fighting BVR, and if you're um, if you're you're operating the cockpit, particularly in the more complex sims, etc., then um, you're not going really going to notice the difference. You're only really going to notice the difference when things are moving fast outside the cockpit. Right, let's take off and have a little flight, and we'll just do a couple of few minutes flying around uh, to see, you know, what it's like for us. We can see there, nice smooth movement on the runway, no juddering, no interpolation. Obviously, just going to raise the nose slightly. And gear up, positive rate, gear up. And you can see here, although we get a little bit of judder there, but as we're climbing, you know, that's nice and smooth. Nice and smooth in the cockpit. Everything's crystal clear. We can see everything, no dramas. The anti-aliasing has given us nice, a nice bit of clarity, etc. And, you know, it's a bit of a myth, I'm afraid, that if you're at 80 hertz, you've got to have 80 frames per second. That's absolute rubbish. In flight sims, you can get away with fixing a frame rate. We're at 40, ASW is off. And as you can see, you know, it's a very comfortable flight. Now, if you're in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you've got the ability to turn the in-sim render resolution down, and I would strongly suggest you do that. But in DCS World, you can see 
We haven't used any pixel density, so we're not really ramping it up on our graphics card. Um, and everything is fine. Now, what about when we do a bit of low level flying? Well, as we're coming around here, you can see that we've just dipped below 40. And because we've dipped below 40, we now start to get a little bit of juddering. All the time we can keep it at 40, it will be fine. And as we look left and right here, we need to be careful these trees are alive and dangerous. But as we look left and right, all the if providing it can manage 40, then there's no juddering. But of course, this is an empty map. There's no other people flying around. There's no enemy. Uh, the CPU is not having to work anything out. You're just able to fly around. And if you, all you want to do is fly around, then you know what? It's perfectly fine. For 45 frames per second, a synchronous spacewalk turned off. And that is in the Oculus Debug tool, or indeed using Oculus Tray tool. If you've got sort of more powerful specs than mine, or about the same, then go for that, that's fine. But, as you can see, you know, it doesn't take much for it to dip. And when it does... Overgy, 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 overgy. But overgy. when it does, you'll start to see it judder. There we go, we're seeing some judder in now. And it's a fair assessment on single player missions or campaigns or on live player servers, you will dip below that which you have set in the debug tool or the Oculus Tray tool of 45 frames per second disabled, i.e. ASW disabled. Now, don't get worried about the fact that you set it at 45, but you're only getting 40. You've, the refresh rate is at 80 hertz, and that is the happy medium for DCS World, in my view. Some of you will have a different take on that, but 80 hertz is perfectly fine. If you drop it to 72, then it can't hold a multiplier or a, four, a multiplier of 40, and so it will be significantly less. So it, you know it will be uh, uh, well, well, it will be uh, it will be <laughs> it will be 36. So um, and that's fine too but it's not the best solution. Uh, what's the best solution? Well, the best solution, for VR anyway, is to fix at 30. Um, now, there are a couple of really good videos out there that have, that have shown why that is the case. Um, and, you know, this is gonna be my diary entry to prove that it, that is certainly the case. But that is the case with DCS World, with X-Plane, and with Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've done this test on all of them. And I've done the test with, with my system, with ASW on, off, fixing refresh rate, fixing frame rates. Um, but um, the bottom line is, is that there really is genuinely no need. All we need to do is use the Oculus Trade tool to fix at 30. Make sure there's a multiplier of 30 as our refresh rate, in this case 90. And you will find when we come back and fly at 30 frames per second, and you can see the juddering there as we're dipped below 40. You can see that there's significant juddering there, and that will make you sick after a while. But you'll see when we come back and we fly at 30 frames or 30 frames per second, 30 hertz locked using the Oculus Tray tool and a 90 hertz refresh rate that our flying experience will be significantly better. Uh, less taxing on your system for a start and much, much smoother. You'll be able to fly longer and you're not gonna get sick. And finally, before we just fade to black and come back in the cockpit again with our systems reset, and again, I'll put some screen grabs up so you can see what they are. Finally, before we Bingo do that, fuel. Bingo fuel. Thanks very much, love. Cheers. <laughs> but the one thing you want to remember for 
in my view, again, it's only my view, but in flying and sim racing, you never want a synchronous space warp, a synchronous space warp on, ever. Um, for some games, you know, it makes sense, but for flying and sim racing, absolutely not. You're going to get interpolation, which is uh, which is a, a fuzziness of what it is that you're looking at when you're moving. You know, we're moving our head left and right now, and the and the clarity remains the same. Every now and then there might be a frame jump, but ultimately it's nice and smooth. If interpolation was on now, i.e. asynchronous space warp, even though we've got the bandwidth and we fixed it, then you would find that we would be getting interpolation and you will get sick. You will feel sick after a while. Um, you know, your eyes are an, extent, are an extension of your brain and this is why in VR, um, people suffer from VR sickness because of the feeling of motion and the interpretation of what they're seeing through their eyes. And in real life, we don't see our image interpolated. We see an image as we're seeing now. So uh, let's fade to black and let's see what it's like at 30. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're back in the cockpit and I've made the appropriate settings. I've put some screen grabs up for you. Everything is still crystal clear and everything is all very st smooth still. Um, and you will notice our frames are fixed at 30. Um, in other words, 30 hertz in the Oculus Tray tool. Um, if you open up the Oculus Debug tool, by the way, it will just show disabled for um, a synchronous space warp. Um, and that is exactly what has, what has happened here. So although you're fixing 30 hertz, that is not with a synchronous space warp turned on. Right, let's go for a little flight then. Let's see how we get on. Okay, we saw significant, uh, we saw a fair amount of juddering, etc. Before and nice and smooth. It's super, super, super smooth. Positive rate gear up. And you can see down there, look how smooth that is. There is absolutely no juddering whatsoever. And even if we ramp up the speed and go for a low level flight, which is what we're going to do, we'll see whether it dips below 30, very unlikely. The other reason for have it at, to have it at 30 is simply because all of our systems are different. And you know, there's many people out there that aren't in a 99, 100k you know I mean there's plenty of people out there on seven sixth and even fifth and fourth generation CPUs running VR and although VR really relies on the GPU sims like Microsoft Flight Simulator and of course um, DCS World rely on a really powerful CU, CPU relies on the CPU a lot so increasing the refresh rate to 90 and fixing it at 30 is much less taxing on the system and of course we haven't changed the pixel density and the settings the graphic settings that we've got are fairly good we haven't changed the pixel density we've kept it at the full resolution of the quest 2 which gives you, in my view, having done <laughs> hours and hours of testing, gives you much better clarity in the cockpit than increasing pixel density. Um, and there we go, you know, you've got, you've got no juddering at all. Let's, let's go for another low level flight over the trees. We can see up there A slight frame polation, but not interpolation. And again, this is super smooth. If I just hold it above the trees there and look left and right, absolutely no dramas at all. 
I'm still keeping my eye to the to the ground. A couple of frame jumps, and that's fine. Frame jumps, slight frame jumps. That's not dipping below 30. That's simply because of the optimization of the sim. And that's rarely going to happen at 30. It happened once or twice back there. It's not going to happen at 30. And the flight experience that I'm having right now is as smooth and as immersive as having it at 40, but a lot less taxing on the system. And you can see, you know, I'm able to um, really look around. Crikey, what is it right here? Look at the crisis. Um, but I'm able to freely look around, it's nice and smooth, the clarity in the cockpit is perfect, I can operate the cockpit. And I've got absolutely... You know, no, the, the sim is... The system is perfectly fine, the sim is fine. I'm getting no interpolation because the synchronous space warp is turned off. And you know, altogether a beautiful experience, which is what VR is supposed to be after all. Um, so yeah. So there you go. So to summarise, everybody has different systems. There is no, there is no one solution that's going to fit everybody. But the best solution, whether you're on a 4760 or a 9900 or a 10900 or whatever. The best solution to guarantee that you're going to have a really good flight experience in VR is to leave your Quest 2 settings at maximum. To have your refresh rate a multiplier of your your fixed rate in Oculus Tray Tool or Debug Tool and to ensure that a synchronous space warp is turned off. Make sure it's turned off, for the love of God. <laughs> because failure to do so will just mean that, uh, well. You'll be left in the clouds.